Hello students, welcome to the pediatrics pointers and the today's topic is synotic congenital heart disease with increased pulmonary blood flow. We'll be discussing two disorders, total anomalous pulmonary venous connection and transposition of great arteries. In TAPVC, all pulmonary veins, they reach the right atrium either directly or indirectly. And how they are reaching, we say different types of TAPVC, supracardiac type, cardiac type and the infracardiac type. In the supracardiac type, pulmonary veins open into vertical vein, which opens into innominate vein, which goes to superior vena cava, which goes to the right atria. So the pulmonary veins are going above the level of heart, it is supracardiac type. In the cardiac type, these are the pulmonary veins which are opening into the right atria or they are opening into the coronary sinus. In the infracardiac type, these are the pulmonary veins which pierce the diaphragm via the esophageal opening. They go and open into the portal vein. Then there is ductus venosus. They go to the inferior vena cava which goes to the right atria. So ultimately the blood is reaching the right atria in all the three. So we have written here pulmonary vein pierces the diaphragm via esophageal opening, goes to the portal vein, ductus venosus, inferior vena cava, and the right atria. Now, what happens at birth? At birth, the ductus venosus closes. So, if the ductus venosus closes, pulmonary vein blood does not reach the heart in infracardiac type. That's why infracardiac type is called as the obstructive type of TAPVC. So, simple one-liners, most common type of TAPVC supracardiac type, most common obstructive type of TAPVC, infracardiac type. So, I have basically differentiated between the supracardiac and the infracardiac type. In the supracardiac type, it is a total mixing condition because there is mixing of both oxygenated and deoxygenated blood in the right atria. But in the infracardiac type, pulmonary vein blood does not reach the right atria. So if you see in supracardiac, right atria is having more blood. So right ventricle also has more blood. So there is enlargement of the right ventricle. But in the infracardiac type, the blood is not reaching the right atria. So the right ventricular cavity is small here. In the supracardiac type, you can get murmurs. Why murmurs? There will be increased flow across the tricuspid valve and the pulmonary valve, which will become relative stenosis. So the murmurs will be present in supracardiac type, but in the infracardiac type, there is no murmurs which are present. The important point, what will happen to the second heart sound? In the supracardiac type, you get is wide and fixed second heart sound. Wide and split, and that is also split, fixed second heart sound. But in the infracardiac type, there is pulmonary hypertension. Due to pulmonary hypertension, there is a single loud S2, that is loud P2 and A2 is not audible. Mild cyanosis in the supracardiac type, but the infracardiac type presents with marked cyanosis and respiratory distress at birth. So in the in supracardiac type at birth, you give prostaglandin even in fusion. So at least particularly to increase the to increase particularly the more blood flow which goes to the heart layer. But in this condition, if you give prostaglandin even in fusion, there is pulmonary hypertension. So, blood will flow from pulmonary artery to iota. So, if the blood will flow from the pulmonary artery to the iota, the cyanosis will increase. The simple one-liner question, in the infracardiac type, in the infracardiac type, what you don't like to give prostaglandin even infusion. If you go to the chest x-ray, in this case, you get his figure of eight or snowman appearance in the supracardiac type. You can very well see in the chest x-ray, this is the left vertical vein. This is the left vertical vein. This is the innominate vein. So this is so-called the innominate vein. Superior vena cava, superior vena cava, and this is the right atria. So that is the figure of eight or so known appearance. But in the infracardiac type, the chest X-ray, you get is the perihilar pattern of pulmonary edema, and what you basically get is the ground glass appearance. This is because there is pulmonary edema due to the increased pulmonary hydrostatic pressure. So this much is expected to be remembered in TAPVC. Then we go to the complete transposition of the great arteries, also called as DTGA, also called as simple TG. In this case, I have shown in the picture, iota is anterior and to the right of the pulmonary artery. Remember, normally iota is to the right, but posterior. But in the TGA, iota becomes to the right and anterior to the pulmonary artery. As the pulmonary artery is posterior, P2 component of S2 is not audible. 
So you get a single second heart sound that is E2. Compare this with infracardiac type of TAPVC. There was a single second heart sound P2. Here there is a single second heart sound that is E2. If you see how the blood is flowing, the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava are blinging the blood to the right atria, which goes to the right ventricle, to which particularly iota is attached. So particularly iota is attached here. So there is attachment of the iota to the right ventricle here. And if you consider on the left side, pulmonary veins bring the blood to left atria, which goes to the left ventricle, which goes to the pulmonary artery. So there is change in the position of the great arteries. Therefore, it is called as the transposition of great arteries. But what is basically happening? Both circulation have become like this. So both circulation are parallel to one another, your one-liner quotient. So if you get the clinical scenarios, one scenario we say before the ductus arteriosus closes. This is the scenario before the ductus arteriosus closes and this is the scenario after ductus arteriosus closes. If the ductus arteriosus has not closed, blood is going from pulmonary artery to iota. So pre-ductal iota will be only getting deoxygenated blood and post-ductal iota will get both mixture of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So in this case, if you will see what you will find, pre-ductal SpO2 is less than post-ductal SpO2. The oxygen saturation in the head and neck and upper limb will be less as compared to the oxygen saturation in the abdomen and lower limbs. So this is what we call in the cardiology reverse differential sinus. Because differential sinusis, you get in coarctation of iota in infancy. You get in the PDA with pulmonary hypertension in adults. There what you get, pre-ductal SpO2 is more than post-ductal. Here we are saying pre-ductal is less than post-ductal. Right? Then we say here after ductus arteriosus closes, I have basically shielded the total ductus arteriosus to show that ductus arteriosus is closed. If the ductus arteriosus, why does it closes? Because there is flow of oxygenated blood from pulmonary artery to iota. And we all know if the oxygenated blood will flow through the ductus arteriosus, ductus arteriosus will close. Once the ductus arteriosus closes, in the arch of iota, there is only deoxygenated. There is only particularly deoxygenated blood. So in the body, there is acidosis and there is no murmur present. Right? So both of the clinical situations you get in the TGA. What will be seen in the chest x-ray? A classical egg on a string appearing. Right? The heart appears larger and oval shaped. Oval. Why oval? It's a globular shape of the heart actually due to the enlargement of the right atria. So due to this enlargement of the right atria and a slightly enlarged left atrium or normal, what you can get particularly, there is a basically globular shaped heart. And the mediastinum becomes narrow. Why narrow? Because both vessels, they are just, you, you can say parallel to one another so called or they are just one above the another. Right? So their shadow becomes narrow and also the thymic shadow becomes narrow. Right? So mediastinum appears smaller than usual giving the appearance of a string. This is due to position of great arteries and reduced or absent thymic shadow. So what you get is the egg on a string appearance. What is to be done? If a child of TGA comes, you first of all start prostaglandin even infusion. So let the ductus arteriosus be patent and the iota gets blood. If this is not sufficient enough, you need to insert a catheter. You go to the right atria, go to the left atria with the help of a catheter. You basically rupture the interatrial septum, which is called as the Rashkind atrial balloon septostomy. So this is the emergency surgery balloon atrial septostomy, which is done in the TGA. And the definitive surgery is the arterial switch operation, Jatin's repair. Taking the iota back to the left side, pulmonary artery back to the right side. The important point is it should be performed within first two weeks of life. Why first two weeks of life? From the left ventricle, pulmonary artery is arising. PVR will decrease. If the PVR will decrease, might be the left ventricular pressure decreases. And ultimately, we have to attach the iota to that left ventricle so that it can supply the blood to whole of the body. So surgery should be done within two. So in this section, I have discussed two synotic congenital heart disease. Please do like, comment and subscribe to this channel. Right? I will be making more videos according to your demands. Thanks for watching.